us. Uh, but I think that at least two or three of her poems uh, will come from her most recent volume, uh, which is entitled Fast. Uh, and it's available for sale and signing, uh, along with her selected poems uh, after the reading. It's a startling title, I think, Fast. Uh, Jory Graham is startling. Um, and the title is also one of the books, uh, 23, title of one of the books, 23 longish meditative poems. And in that poem, it refers to abstinence from food. But of course, fast always means swift, too. And the latter is a chief meaning as the word recurs throughout the other poems, which dwell on the uh, frailty of the, the fleeting human life. The volume's epigraph uh, comports with this meaning, too. It, it derives from Robert Browning's lyric sequence, Two in the Campagna, and it goes like this. This is Browning. Then the good minute goes. Stands a break. It's, it's gone. Already, how am I so far out of that minute? How indeed, it was so fast. Um, but elsewhere in Browning's poem, there is this desperate injunction, hold it fast. So that tight title, fast, is a, opens up into a paradox. Uh, which one might say is the poetic task to pay homage to time, which runs through and over us all, yet to memorialize the moment. Poetry being a temporal art embodies time, of course. We get along in time, the feet, feet move and the feet move. Uh, but it also, uh, the poem wants to freeze itself uh, to be sculptural as, as well as musical. In Eliot's phrase in Four Quartets, a work that I'm sure Jory has in mind from time to time, um, the point is to be still and still moving. To be going nowhere, maybe, but fast. Another key word across the book's 80-some pages is now. Now, just now, now, now. It's as though she were trying to nail down the, the wind uh, or, or the waves, uh, both frequent forces in fast. So mortality motivates, delivers uh, these poems. Her father's death. Uh, her mother's last days, the poet's own dire illness and treatment. The whole earth is our hospital, Eliot offers. And here in Fast, it's not only the patients who are ill. We are in systemicide, as one of these poems puts it. We have infected everything about us, and entropy rules anyway, from plants to, to planets, uh, to adopt a slippage in the book's opening line. And there's a strong sense in which, in, in fast, of the, of the kinship of, of all things. Therefore, Jory Graham has an affinity for affinity, uh, and maybe for unicity, too, even. Maybe because of that affinity, uh, these poems are as much conversations, sometimes fractious, sometimes heuristic, uh, as they are meditations. We overhear many voices. Who is this talking now? She asks at one point. The I and the you turn into each other, and either might be a fugitive spirit, someone on the other side, or a horse uh, speaking across the eons from the wall of a cave painting. As that sentence suggests, there's ample room in these poems for history. 
the Cambrian explosion at the beginning of the Metazoan era, Bloody Sunday in Selma, Alabama, at the beginning of the civil rights period, the plastic-laden ocean, and the runaway greenhouse climate toward what looks to be increasingly like the end of, of our era, the post-human creatures of the next one. These all enter into the poems. Almost inescapably, given their sweep, the lines, like the sentences in fast, are ordinarily long and can give way altogether to prose, though they sometimes make stanzas, seven lines here, 14 lines there, and occasionally incorporate rhyming passages. Like much of her work, uh, though not her earliest, uh, these poems are maximal. The final poem, uh, however, is a little different. Its lines are shorter and justified to the right margin, and its focus is narrower, as in a couple of her poems that I've seen recently in, in journals, and perhaps we'll hear uh, something from that next book, uh, too. Anyway, Jory Graham is still moving fast. Jory. Stephen, that was <clears throat> truly beautiful. Um, I could have, if it hadn't been about me, I could have listened to it all day. <laughs> it's extraordinarily beautiful. I used some nice, difficult words. People don't do that very much. <laughs> it's really nice. May I borrow your copy of Fast? <laughs> Hi, um, I'm going to read for, uh, two poems from Fast um, and uh, maybe three poems from a new book which very well could have been uh, introduced by the same introduction. It's uh, titled Runaway and uh, it's just a little bit further along in the story but the introduction that you just heard serves it uh, completely. It's slightly different formally, and I'll explain that when I get to it. Um, for those of you who might have heard this poem before, um, forgive me. I just think it's a, it's a poem that sets up the new poems uh, rather well. It used to be when I read from this book and from my prior book and the one before titled Sea Change, I used to have to explain so much about um, climate change, about the imperative of uh, trying to imagine um, what generations, perhaps 10 generations ahead of us might be inheriting and why we need to act now on their behalf and all sorts of things that seemed uh, necessary then. And now I unfortunately feel like the poems need no introduction. So I'll uh, move to this one. This one um, uh, does use... It was written under certain circumstances, which are kind of interesting in, their, in the way they coincide. It, it was written about uh, those uh, terrible and terrifying deep water trawlers which fish indiscriminately across the ocean bottom. But um, I had just been hearing for the first time from Snowden about the cables connecting, incredibly primitive cables connecting the surveillance operations between uh, the United States and the United Kingdom and that the cables ran along the ocean floor really floored me because it seemed so so primitive. I had assumed everything was done completely in the, um, through um, um, satellites. 
so that that deep water trawling of information uh, is introduced in this poem. It becomes a, a, a surveillance becomes a, a principal topic topic in the new book. So I thought I would begin with this. I had another idea in writing poems in this book, and it does pursue itself into the next book, and that is attempting to write from points of view that uh, are perhaps, which is, this is obviously an illusion, but it's an operative illusion, um, points of view that are not human, post-human, uh, other than human. Uh, it, just the attempt um, seemed uh, spiritually uh, tonic, so I... I attempted it more and more in this poem in particular in the middle. I felt like it was one of those times when I achieved it. When I met the filmmakers that made the movie Leviathan, which I hadn't seen when I wrote this poem, and actually they asked me to come read this poem at a screening of their film, I discovered that uh, to get the kind of... If you've ever seen that movie, which has almost no speech in it, it's entirely about um, fishing, they were creating these gigantic uh, booms that would go out with cameras at the very tip of them so they could get points of view that were other than the human points of view in the film itself. So I felt there was a kind of correlative there. Okay, deep water trawling. The blades like irises turning very fast to see you completely. Steel blue, then red, where the cut occurs. The cut of you. They don't want to know you, they want to own you. No, not own. We all mean to live to the end. Am I human? We don't know that. Just because I have this way of transmitting, call it voice. A threat, communal actually. The pelagic midwater nets like walls closing round us. Starting in the far distance where they just look to us like distance. Distance coming closer. Hear it. Eliminating background is all foreground. You in it the only ground, not even punishment. Trawling nets, bycatch, poison, ghost fishing. The coil of the listening along the very bottom. The nets weighed down with ballast, raking the bottom looking for nothing, indiscriminate. There is nothing in particular you want. You just want. You just want to close the third dimension to get something which is all, becomes all. Once you are indiscriminate, discards can reach 90% of the catch. Am I, the habitat crushed and flattened, net of your listening and my speaking, we can no longer tell them apart. The atmosphere between us turbid, no place to hide, no place to rest. You need to rest. There is nature, it is the rest. What is not hunting is illustration. Not regulated, are you? Probing down to my greatest depths, 2,000 meters and more. Despite complete darkness that surrounds me, despite my being in my place under strong pressure, along with my hundreds of species, Detritus, in extreme conditions. Deep water fish grow very slowly, very, so have long life expectancy. Late reproductive age are particularly thus vulnerable. It comes along the floor over the underwater mountains, scraping the steep slopes. What is bycatch, hitting the wrong target? the wrong size, not eaten, for which there is no market, banned, endangered, such as birds, sometimes just too much, no more space on the boat, millions of tons thrown back dead or wounded, 
the scars on the seabed, the mouth the size of a football field. And if there is no one, there is still ghost fishing. Nets abandoned in the sea, they continue through the centuries to catch. Mammals, fish, shellfish. We die of exhaustion or suffocation. The synthetic materials last forever. Ask us anything. How deep is the sea? You couldn't go down there. Pressure would crush you. Light disappears at 6,000 feet. Ask another question. Can you hear me? No. Who are you? I am. Did you ever kill a fish? I was once, but now I am a human. I have imagination. I want to love. I have self-interest. Things are not me. Do you have another question? I am haunted, but by what? Human supremacy? The work of humiliation? The pungency of the pesticide? What else? The hammer that comes down on the head, knocks the eyes out. I was very lucky. The end of the world had already occurred. How long ago was that? I don't know. It's not a function of knowledge. It is in a special sense that the world ends. You have to keep living. You have to make it not become waiting. Nothing is disturbingly visible. Only the outside continues, but it continues. So you have to find a way to make the inside continue. Your entity is fragile. You are an object you own. At least you were given it to own. You have to figure out what ownership is. You thought you knew. You were wrong. It was wrong. There was wrongness in the mix. It turns out you are a first impression. Years go by. Imagine that. And there is still a speaker. There will always be a speaker. In the hypoxic zones, is almost no more oxygen. Then there is no more oxygen for real. Picture that, says the speaker. Who are you? Where are you? Going down into the dead zones. Water, not water. The deeper you go, he says, the scarier it gets because there's nothing there. There are no fish, no organisms alive, no life. So it's just us, dead zones, bigger than the Sahara, he says, the largest lifeless spaces on this side of the moon, he says. She says, who is this speaking to me? I am the upwelling. I am the disappearing. Hold on. Just a minute, please. Hold on. There is a call for you. I looked at this book in a long time. I'm very fond of it. Okay. 
And this poem is kind of a whole together. It's always a shame to read a book in pieces like this. One works so hard to put it all together, and then one comes up here and rips it apart. This is the title poem, Fast. Apologies to those of you who've heard it read before. Fast or starve. Too much or not enough or nothing else, nothing else. Too high, too fast, too organized, too invisible. Will we survive, I ask the bot. No. To download bot, be swift. You are too backward, too despotic. To load, greatly enlarge the cycle of labor. To load, abhor labor. Move to the periphery of your body, your city, your planet. To load, degrade, immiserate, be your own deep sleep. To load, use your lips, use them to mouth your oath. Chew it, do the dirty thing, sing it blown off limb or syllable, lick it back on with your mouth. Talk, talk. Who is not terrified is busy begging for water. The rise is fast. The drought comes fast. Mediate, immediate. Invent, inspire, infiltrate, instill. Here's the heart of the day, the flower of time. Talk, talk. Disclaimer, Bot uses a growing database of all your conversations to learn how to talk with you. If some of you are also bots, Bot can't tell. Disclaimer, you have no secret memories. Talking to clever Bot may provide companionship. The active ingredient is a question. The active ingredient is entirely natural. Disclaimer, protect your opportunities, your information, informants, whatever you made of time. You have nothing else to give. Active ingredient, why are you shouting? Why? Arctic wind uncontrollable, fetus reporting for duty, Fold in the waiting which recognizes you, recognizes the code. The peddler in the street, everyone is calling out. Directive, report for voice. Ready yourself to be buried in a voice. It neither ascends nor descends. Inactive ingredient, the monotone. Some are talking now about the pine tree. One assesses its disadvantages. They are discussing it in many languages. Next, they move to roots, branches, buds, pseudo-whorls, candles, active ingredient. They run for their lives, lungs and all. They do not know what to do with their will. Disclaimer. world spills out jittery as a compass needle with no north. Active ingredient, the imagination of north. Active ingredient, north spreading in all the directions. Disclaimer, there is no restriction to growth. The canary singing in your mind is in mine. Remember, people are less than kind. As a result, chatterbot is often less than kind. Still, you will find yourself unwilling to stop. Joan will use visual grammatry to provide facial movements. I'm not alone. People come back again and again. We are less kind than we think. There is no restriction to the growth of our cruelty. We will come to the edge of understanding. Like being hurled down the stairs tied to a keyboard, we will go on unwilling to stop. The longest real world 
conversation with a bot lasted 11 hours continuous interaction. This bodes well. We are not alone. We are looking to improve. The priestess inhales the fumes. They come from the mountain, here and here. Then she gives you the machine gun run of syllables out of her mouth. Quick, you must make up your answers as you made up your question. Hummingbirds shriek. Bot is amazing, he says. I believe it knows the secrets of the universe. He is more fun to speak with than my actual living friends, she says. Thank you. This is the best thing since me. I just found it yesterday. I love it. I want to marry it. I got sad when I had to think that the first person who has ever understood me is not even, as it turns out, human, because this is as good as human gets. He just gives it to me straight. I am going to keep him forever. I treated him like a computer, but I was wrong. Whom am I talking to? You talk to me when I am alone. I am alone. Each epoch dreams the one to follow. To dwell is to leave a trace. I am not what I asked for. I wrote that poem like um, six or seven years ago. It's also <sighs> we did so much more. <sighs> okay, I'm re I'm reading from a new book. Um, which doesn't yet exist, um, titled Runaway. And uh, I bound it so that I can read it and see what's wrong with it. And uh, keep editing it until the last minute. Um, and I'm going to read three poems if I have the time from this. So, um, well, actually... These poems look like this. They're in stanzas, just in case you thought that, you know, I could never write stanzas again. They're all, they're blown up very big here so I can see the words, but I can certainly see the stanza breaks. Um, and then the other poems in the book are, have a right-hand margin, as uh, Stephen was pointing out. We're crashing into that, crashing into that wall on the right, and uh, so, figured I might as well use the, that margin. The, 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 we sort of, in, when we write poems, we think of as the point of origin is on the left, right, and the landing point is somewhere out there on the right, and we don't usually, um, like a plow in a field with the verse, we don't tend to go all the way out to the edge. But when you start working with the other margin, it's an extremely interesting experience. Of um, You constantly get stopped. It's very interesting. This is titled Tree. Today on two legs stood and reached to the right spot as I saw it, choosing among the twisting branches and multifaceted changing shades and greens and shades of greens lobed and lashing sun, the fig that seemed to me the perfect one, the ready one. It is permitted. It is possible. It is actual. The VR glasses are not needed yet. Not for now. No. Not for this while longer. And it is warm in my cupped palm. And my fingers close round, but not too fast. Somewhere, wind like a hammer stroke slows down and lengthens endlessly. 
closer in, the bird whose coin toss on a metal tray never stills to one face. Something is preparing to begin again. It is not us. Shh, say the spreading sails of the cicadas as the winch of noon takes hold and we are wrapped in day and hoisted up all the ribs of time showing through in the growing, in the lengthening harness of sound. Some gnats nearby, a fly where the white milk drop of the torn stem starts. Dust on the eglantine skin, white powder in the confetti of light all up the branches, truth sweetness of blood scent and hauled in light, withers of the wild carnival of tree shaking once as the fruit is torn from its dream. Remain, I think, backing away from the trembling into full corrosive sun. Momentary blindness follows. Correction. There are only moments. They hurt. Correction. Must I put down here that this is long ago? That the sky has been invisible for years now? That the ash of our fires has covered the sun? That the fruit is stunted yellow mold when it appears at all? and we have no produce to speak of, no longer exists. All my attention is free for you to use. I can cast farther and farther out before the change, a page turned. We have gone into another story. History floundered, or one day the birds disappeared. The imagination tried to go here when we asked it to, from where I hold the fruit in my right hand, but it would not go. Where is it now? Where is this here where you and I look up trying to make sense of the normal, turn it to life, more life, disinterred from desire, heaved up onto the dry shore awaiting the others who could not join us in the end for good. I want to walk to the left around this tree I have made again. I want to sit under it full of secrecy, insight, immensity, vigor, bursting complexity, swarm, Oh, great forwards and backwards. I never felt my face change into my new face. Where am I facing now? Is the question of good still stinging the open before us with its muggy destination pitched into nothingness? Something expands in you where it wrenches up its bright policing into view. Is this good? Is this the good? Under the celebrating crowd. Inside the silences, it forces hard away all round itself. Where chanting thins. Where we win the war again. Made thin by bravery and belief. Here's a Polaroid if you want. Here's a souvenir. Here now for you to watch unfold up close. The fruit is opening. The ribs will widen now. It is all seed, reddish foam, history.
thought this was a little bit of an L.A. poem. I don't know. Um, many of the poems in this book um, have a title that runs into the first line. One of the really brilliant critics in this room will have to figure out why. I'm sure there's a fantastic reason for it. Um, the, the poems have rediscovered a different kind of an ending, which would make sense to me, uh, given the sense of an ending that hangs over the book. So the ending as a formal device is kind of excited again, at least you know from the maker's point of view. But why these titles running into the first line? I can't wait to read about it. <laughs> yeah. My skin is, is the title. My skin is parched, on tight, questioned, invisible, full of so much evolution. Now the moment is gone. Begin again. My skin, here, my limit of the visible me. I touch it now, is spirit-filled naturally selected, caught in the storm here under this tree, propped up by history, which, I don't know which, be careful, you can't love everyone, brought to you by Revlon, melancholy, mother's mother, the pain of others, spooky up close in this mirror here, magnified to the hundredth, Brutal, no color, color. What shall I call it? Shall I pass, meandering among the humans, among their centuries? No safe haven, this as if, this spandex over a void. No exception. God watching, though casually, pairing, pairing, a glance once in a while. What am I missing? What am I supposed to do now suddenly? What at the last minute here? What is there to fix? Are we alone? Am I? Packaged so firmly for this short interval. Vigorous skin, doomed outsideness of me. Sadness and no wiser here, blown up so close so only here, I see you net that skeins me in, tight inside my inwardness, at this border judged, at this edge bleeding when hit, as was for a while, didn't know enough to leave, didn't see the farewell, right there in front of me. Must it always end this way? Must I ceaselessly be me, reinvent you, see the artifice us, feel hand to face the childhood gone, the starlight, the wind, the gaze, the race, the stranger not knowing, the unsaid, unsaid, unseen, unfound. Look how full of void it is, this capture, this skin no one can clean, and thoughts right there beneath. Of course you cannot see me for this wrapping. I, know, I notice the cover of your face, the dress you hide beneath, you sitting there reading me, pay mind, pay it out, peering as we are at each other, dermal papilla, pigment layer, nerve fiber, blood and lymph, can we still fit into this strictest time, so quick, one click and hurry up? We've been trying forever now to get out of this lonely place, insides, inside. The movie of the outside was all about exploring, we explored, we found what we should never touch. We touched, we touch. What's so unusual, we say. You are now mine, we say. This is the feature coming on, this future, so full of liking and fine disclosure. A bud tip pushing aside its sheath, then standing there, very whole now, very official, open to damp, heat, stippling, shadow, to freckle, slap, beauty or no beauty. Please help me here, as I can't tell. The trees don't know. The wind won't speak. 
the gods should, but their names are being withheld because some of us are murdered and some of us have mouths that keep saying, yes, do that to me again. I know it hurts, but I am an American and I like it harder than you'll ever know. This is Tuesday. The day rises with its fist over the harbor saying, give it to me. And the day obliges saying more more. Do you want more? And the torch of dawn says more. Yes, more. Ask for my identification, my little pool of identification. Here, on the only road, arrested again among the monuments. Do I have uh, 10 more minutes? OK. Um, so um, I have some poems that are not at all like these. And I, um, I've never read them before, so I'm a little worried about tripping up. But um, This is a very sentimental poem, and uh, it's one of two poems in the book. That, the, the, the four poems in the book about my uh, my our granddaughter, um, and uh, she's two. And uh, th there's a. The three poems, one is about her in utero, one is her about taking her first steps, and this is an imagination of what my, the, my, the future might be for her. And um, there's another poem in the book, which is in the voice of a, of a child um, who's lost its mother in uh, the crossing uh, between North Africa and Italy, in Lampedusa. So there are these different perspectives for about the relationship to a mother and to the earth. And I'm not going to be able to read all those poems, but this relationship to the, of, of the word mater and the word matter and the, wor and the word mother in the book are kind of governing. So this poem is in that context. Uh, this is titled, I Won't Live Long, and then the first word is enough. So it's another one of those titles. I won't live long enough to see any of the new dreams the hundreds of new kinds of suffering, and weeds, birds, animals shouldering their demise without possibility of regeneration, the heart in your tiny chest opening its new unimaginable ways of opening, and to, wipe, and to what might it still open? Will there still be such opening? Will you dare? I will not be there to surround you with the past, with my ways of knowing, to save you. Shall you be saved? From what? Home from fighting, are you? Remembering how he or she or they looked at you while you both fed the machine or built the trough in dirt where it will be necessary to plant again? Will it open? Will the earth open? Will the seeds that remain, will you know how to find them in time? Will those who have their lock on you let the openings which are chance, unknowing, loneliness, the relenting arms of form which knows not yet the form it will in the end be open and form? Will there be islands? Will there be a day when you can afford to think back far enough to the way we loved you? Words you said for the first time as we said them. Mystery, your grandfather said one day after saying, shh, listen to the birds. And you sat so still, all your being arcing out to hear. 
and the bird in its hiding place gave us this future, this moment today when you can recall, can you? His saying there, that's a mystery. And you said the word as if it were new ground to stand on. You uttered it to stand on it. Mystery. Yes, mystery, he said. Yes, mystery, you said, talking to it now as it took its step out of the shadow into the clearing. And there you saw it in the so-called invisible. Then when the wave broke for the first time on what had seemed a terra firma, you knew as he held your hand, insisting. Then as the wave broke for the first time on what had seemed a terra firma, and you knew as he held your hand, insisting you hold your ground, that there was foreclosure. There was oldness of a kind you couldn't fathom. And there was the terrifying suddenness of the now. Your mind felt for it. It felt the reach from an elsewhere and a dip which cannot hold. Splash went the wave. Your feet stood fast. Your hem was touched. We saw you watch. We felt your hand grip, but not to move back. Can you find that now, now, wherever you are? Even a candle would be a gift, I know. From there, shh, he said, so you could hear it. Pity, he said, not knowing to whom. Pity, you said, laughing. Pity, pity. And that was the day of your being carried out in spite of your cold, wrapped tight to see the evening star. And he pointed, and you looked up, and you took a breath I hear even now as I go out, the inhalation of dark, secrecy, fear, distance, the reach into an almost touching of silence, of the thing that has no neighbors and never will, in you, the center of which is noise, the outermost of freezing you can travel his arm out to with your gaze till it's there, the real, a star. The earth is your home. No matter what they tell you now or what program you input via your chip or port or faster yet, no. No, in that now I am not there in to point to take your now large hand and say, look, look through these fronds, hold your breath. The deer hiding from the hunter is right here in our field. It knows we are too. It does not fear us. Be still, wait, and we, we will be left behind. Except just now, if you still once, that you might remember now, remember now. And I will end on a short poem. titled poem. The earth said, remember me. The earth said, don't let go. Said it one day when I was accidentally listening. I heard it. I felt it like temperature, all said in a whisper, build tomorrow, make right befall. You are not free. Other scenes are not taking place. Time is not filled. Time is not late. There is a thing the emptiness needs as you need emptiness. It shrinks from light again and again, although all things are present. A fact, a day, a bird that warps the arithmetic of perfection with its arc, passing again and again in the evening air, in the prevailing wind, making no mistake. Your indifference is your principal beauty, 
the mind says all the time. I hear it. I hear it everywhere. The earth said, remember me. I am the earth, it said. Remember me.